Okay, good morning. Um, this video, we're going to look at some of the equations, some of the more tricky um, equations which you could encounter in Core 2, and in particular with um, involving trigonometry. Um, the previous video, we looked at using graphs to solve very simple trigon trigonometrical equations. Now we're going to notch it up a bit and have a look at when we have more than one different trigonometrical um, function involved in the equation. So here we've got an equation. I'm going to go through three examples. Here's the equation um, 2 sine x is equal to cos x. And what is different to this equation from others is that we've got two different sine and cos functions. Now, when we look and when we have an equation which has two different sine and cos functions, we need to use one of the trigonometrical identities to convert them into one. Now, the two fundamental trig identities are that sine x divided by cos x is equal to tan x. And the other one which you need to know for this module is that sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. These are true, these are identities, and this means they are true for all values of x. Okay? No matter what x is, we can, we can say that this is true. Now let's have a look at the form of this equation. And this equation here, um, it has a sine and a cos in. It doesn't have a sine squared in, and it doesn't have a cos squared in, so I'm more tempted to use this one here. Okay? Um, now, how can we get sine over cos? Now, that's quite simple. If we divide both sides by cos x, we get two lots of sine x all over cos x is equal to 1. Okay? And then using our trig identity, um, we can say that this is two lots of tan x, and that's equal to 1. And sine x over cos x is 1. This is nice, we've got a nice, very simple trig equation to solve now, because if we divide by 2, the 2 is outside the tan, so we have to, before we do the inverse tan, we have to get rid of that 2 there by dividing it by 2, so we get tan x is equal to a half, okay? We can then inverse tan it, now on your calculators, you have it written, I like writing it as arc tan, okay? But you would have it written in, in the calculators and do it as, as time minus tan minus one to the half. Okay? Um, arc tan and tan to the minus one, well, inverse tan, let's get that straight, are exactly the same. So using the calculators here, now the range between 0 and 360 suggests that degree mode needs to be used here. So x is equal to, if I do the arc tan of 0.5, we get 26.6. Okay, so that's going to be one of our solutions. But as we, looked in the pre as we know from a previous video, that although that will give us one solution, the graphs of tan, sine, and cos are periodic. There could be some other solutions. Let's do a quick sketch of the tan graph. Now the tan graph is going to start off at zero and it's going to go up there and 90 degrees is the asymptote. And it goes from there to there, that's 180. I'll give myself enough space here. Um, that's what I'll do. Highlight all that. Uh, group that. Um, So we can see um, our solution 26.6 is going to be somewhere there, let's say. So sort of along, we're also going to get another solution there in the range from 0 to 360. So if you find that one, we're just going to add on um, 180 there. Okay, 0 to there, 180 to there, and add on 180. So our other solution is going to be 26.2 at 180, so 200. 
Okay. Um, always be remember to sketch the graph in order to get the other solutions there. Um, you'll lose a mark for not getting all of the solutions. But the principle being, in this example, that by having a sin x and a cos x, having a sin x and having a cos x, for none of them squared, this is the identity that we're going to use. Okay? So, moving on, um, let's look at this one here. Now, solving the range between 0 and 360 again, the equation tan squared x is equal to tan 3 tan x plus 4. Now, first things first, we notice we're only dealing with tans. Oh. We're only dealing with tans. Okay. Now, that is useful for us because that means that perhaps we don't need to use a trig identity. If, we, or if our equation just has one function in, then we're not going to need... Sorry, I'm just doing my shoelaces up here. I do not want a nasty accident. Pardon me. There we go. Right, so because they're all the same, it means that we do not have to worry about using a trig identity. The trouble is, we've got this tan squared. Okay. Now, this is effectively a quadratic in disguise. Now, I'm going to set it all to zero. And first of all, our traditional method of solving quadratics. So tan x, I'm going to take away the 3 tan x. I'm going to take away the 4, and it equals 0. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this is a quadratic. If we imagine that this is u squared, so if let's imagine that u is tan, we get u squared minus 3u minus 4. Okay, that's the quadratic. Now we're going to use factorising or formula. Hopefully, in the um, most of the time it will be factorising, but um, in, as in this case, sometimes you might need to use the formula. So if we factorise it, we're going to get well, it's going to be a tan x. We're looking for two numbers multiplied to minus 4. So there's a tan x and a tan x there in the brackets. That's going to give us the tan x squared. We want to multiply them to minus 4, but add to minus 3. So it doesn't matter which way around I do. So it will be minus 4 plus 1. Okay, so minus 4 tan x plus 1 tan x is minus 3 tan x. And minus 4 times plus 1 is minus 4. Okay. Now, we're going to get two solutions here. Now, if this bracket is equal to 0, we get tan x is equal to 4. If this bracket is equal to 0, we get tan x is equal to 1. Okay. Now, doing the inverse tan, x is arc tan 4. So, for this example, x is going to be arc tan of 4, which is 75, 76.0. Um, so this one, x is arc tan of 1, you should know this, uh, 45, that's a nice straight 45 there, that's an exact value. Now we're also going to have to get the other solutions. We're gonna, we're gonna, by sketching the graph, always sketch the graph, to get the other solutions. Okay, so we're going to start off once before, there's our 90, there's the learn. Now, if we deal with, first of all, if we deal with the 76.0 solution, that's going to be right about to there. So, 76, our other solution is going to be 180 on, which would be 256. So, we also get x256. Okay, by adding 180 on. We're also going to get solution 45, which is there. And again, adding on. Um, adding on, we get 225 for x. 225 by adding on 180. There's no more solutions in that range. We are done. There are four solutions to that equation. Okay. The reason why there's four lot of solutions is because we've got that tan squared. It's because when we factorise it, when we solve any quadratic, we're going to get two solutions, um, real or imaginary. Um, we're not going to worry about imaginary trig functions at this stage, um, or no other stage in this course. So because we have this line here, we're going to get two separate solutions. And then you have to use the graph to work out the other two. Okay. So that's kind of a 
example of a trig equation that is quadratic in disguise. The next example is a kind of mixture of both methods. And it's a bit nasty, this. Sine squared 2x. So sine squared 2x um, is equal to cos 2x minus 1. Now, first of all, there's lots of different complications here. We've got, we've got sine and the cos, two separate, two different trig functions. So my instant thinking is, okay, I've got to use one of these trig bits. Tan x is equal to sine x over cos x, and sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. So that's my first port of call. Now I'm thinking, I've got sine squared, I've got a normal cos, I'm thinking I'm going to have to use this. Okay, I'm going to have to use this. Now the trouble is, we've got this nasty 2x involved now, instead of x. Now this is a bit of, in a way, a bit of a, re um, <coughs> a red herring. This doesn't affect the structure of our equation at all. Now remember, this here is an identity, which means it's true for every single value denoted t. Right. It's true for every single value of x. So if sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1, we also know that sine squared of 2x plus cos squared of 2x is equal to 1. Okay. We can have sine squared of a monkey plus cos squared of a monkey, but it will still be 1. Okay. So we've got, we've got 2x's here, both 2x's here, we can leave them as 2x's here. <coughs> right. I'm going to re we've got sine squared there, so I'm going to rearrange this identity so that we can um, make it into sine squared as the subject. So sine squared 2x is equal to 1 minus cos squared 2x. Now this is the trick. We are going to substitute this expression for our sine squared 2x. Okay, we're going to substitute it in. So, instead of having sine squared 2x, we're going to have 1 minus cos squared 2x is equal to cos 2x minus 2. Now, we're in a far more better situation now, because this equation just involves cos 2x. There's a squared involved, this is going to be a quadratic in disguise, so set it to zero, use your methods. I'm going to add the minus cos squared x to both sides, and I'm going to take away 1, so we'll end up with 0 is equal to cos squared 2x plus cos 2x. We'll have minus 2 minus the 1 there, so minus 3. Okay. Now, here's the quadratic, and we're going to make u equal to cos 2x. Now, I don't think this isn't factorizable. A little bit thing. Can we have two numbers which multiply to minus three but add to one? Um, that isn't happening. Okay, so we're going to have to use the formula here. So before we'd have this is u squared plus u minus three effectively. Okay, so u our variable is cos two x. So using the formula, cos two x. Okay, this should be imprinted in your brain right now. It's going to be minus b. So minus one. In this case, because b is plus 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4 lots of a, which is 1, multiplied by minus 3, divided by 2. Okay? So we get cos 2x is equal to minus 1, plus or minus root 13, divided by 2. Okay? Now, this is interesting. Cos 2x, let's just put this into a um, calculator now. Minus 1 plus root 13. Some of you might be figuring out what's going to happen here. Divide by 2. Um, we get cos x is equal to 1.3 over 3. Or cos 2x is equal to minus 1 minus root 13 divided by 2, and we get cos x equal to minus 2.3 over 3. Okay? Now, some of the more alert amongst you would realise that 
from doing this now, if let, let, let's roll with it, let's just do what you perhaps do. Some of you would have realised that this is, isn't going to work. But the 2x here is locked inside the cos. So we, as before, as we mentioned in another video, to get into that 2x, we have to arc cos, or inverse cos, of 1.303. And to get to the 2 here, we have to inverse cos of minus 2.303. Okay? Now, I can put this into my calculator, and I know I'm going to get a math error here. The reason I'm going to get a math error is that this isn't going to work. The arc cos of 1.303 and the arc cos of minus 2.303 does not work. It, it doesn't exist. And that's all down to this cos graph. And that's why I say knowledge of the cos graphs and sine graphs is so important for your understanding of the trick. So the cos graph, the cos bucket there, it's very important. It goes between minus 1 and 1. Now we've got the cos of 1.303 be up there somewhere. Now, there's no value, of, no angle of, which will give us 1.303 when we do the cos of it. Therefore, we can say there are no solutions to this equation. No solutions to this equation. Now, I'm not going to say that in the exam they can give you one which has no solutions to the equation, but there's no reason why they wouldn't. Okay, and you'd have to prove that there are no solutions. Um, it's really vital on these two roots being between minus 1 and 1 when you get the quadratic. If they're not between minus 1 and 1, then there's no solutions. Um, and that's fine. Sometimes, saying that there's no solutions to an equation is just as important as finding the solutions to an equation. And there's nothing wrong with the logic involved there has shown that there are no solutions to these equations. So, to recap, um, what we've done in this video is we've looked at a very a, a simple using trig identities to solve equations. First one, no squares. We want to use the sine tan x is equal to sine over cos. The second one, quadratic in disguise. No trig identities needed because all of the, the, the trig functions are the same there. Third one, when we've got a squared involved, but the trig identities are different, we're going to use the sine squared plus cos squared as one identity.